meet you. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, I guess tell me how you pronounce your name so I don't mess it up. Yeah, it's, it's just Caitlin. Looks like Caitlin. Gotcha. Cool. All right, sweet. How has your day been so far? It's been good. Yeah, it kind of flew by. Um, just work week, you know, ready for Friday. Yeah. So do you do real estate full time or like what's your day to day, I guess? No. So I have a W2 job. Um, okay. I work for a Fortune 100 company. It's a really great place to work. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I'd rather be doing real estate full time for sure. <laughs> okay. I'm hoping to get there in the next year to two, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, I wish you well. And uh, yeah. <laughs> well, so, yeah, I went ahead and uh, it's like a it's recording now. Sorry, my dogs know how to open the door. So they'll be in and out. <laughs> but um, but, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to be pretty casual. Uh, and I'll I'll shoot you the recording at the end. Okay. Um, and then I have a person that will probably chop it up into like one to two minute segments just because I mean, my attention span is about a minute, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Thanks. All right, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, so I guess let's just jump right in. If you'll say your name and uh, like, just tell us a little bit about like your your experience in real estate, how you got started. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Caitlin Frisha. I'm a real estate investor out of Atlanta, Georgia. Really, you could say I'm like more North Atlanta, but everyone just understands Atlanta when you say it. Um, my journey began a few years ago. I lived in an apartment and I was just like, why am I paying $1,400 a month for this? This is crazy. Um, and I just thought like, hey, like, let me just buy a house. Why not? Um, yeah. And then I was like, okay, like I got some people I know from like my rugby team in college. I was like, yeah, I could just like rent it out to them. That's normal, right? And then at some point I was like, wait, what am I doing? Like, this is, this is real estate. This is working. Um, and yeah. so it just kind of led me to where I am now. Cool. So uh, tell us about that first deal, I guess. Like, so uh, what city specifically, I know you're in Atlanta area, but like what city, uh, was it a duplex? Like how much was it? All that stuff. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, it was a single family home in Ackworth, Georgia. So um, why Ackworth is so important is because it's right by a, um, a school, Kennesaw State University. So tons of college students live in the area. Um, purchase price, it was on market. Um, I don't remember what it was originally listed as, but it had gone on and off, on and off, on and off. Um, when I finally got to it, um, it was listed at 145. Um, and then my offer was 150. And the reason being is because again, I was just starting out. Like I really didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I had to go with an FHA loan. I didn't have a lot of cash. And so my agent was just like, look, like if you don't have the money to make this work, you know, maybe just, you know, see if they'll pay for your closing costs if you offer higher. Yeah, um, absolutely. That really well for me. So um, again, because I was just starting out, I didn't know that I should like keep track of all the numbers that I had. Um, <laughs> cool. Whatever three and a half percent down is on a $150,000 loan, which is nothing. Yeah. Um, and then there were tons of rooms in there. So I almost always had two to three roommates. So getting just about $1,500 a month and just like rental income. Um, and then I ended up selling it two years later at 216. Wow. So, cool. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. It, uh, it worked out really well. It was a lot of fun being there. Yeah. So uh, why did you decide to sell? There was an issue, probably the reason why. <laughs> it, like, <laughs> yes, so long. we got to know about um, the issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a $10,000 foundation issue and okay. it seemed like it was going to rear its head any moment. And so I was like, no, like, I just want to, I just want to get out of this while I can, because again, I was just like a little baby investor, had no idea what I was doing, had no idea, like really, what does it matter if my foundation goes out? But everyone was just like, yeah, you might want to get out of it. Um, and at that time, the market was like stupid hot and it was probably the the highest I was ever going to get for the house anyway. So, it was just okay. so, um, all right. Tell me a little bit more about that. So ha like what problems were happening that would point to like a foundation issue? Did it come up when you were first buying it and you were like, eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no, it was pointed out. And again, I didn't know anything. So I wasn't scared of anything. <laughs> right, right. Um, so it was, what's the word? It's like a giant retaining wall, but it was like over 10 feet high. It was a retaining wall okay. in the front of my house, but it was basically holding up my porch. So okay. it wasn't directly related to the foundation, but if it toppled over, it would have like took out, it would have taken out my basement, essentially. 
Gotcha. Um, okay. And it's just, yeah, I was not trying to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so for someone that's just like, you know, seeing this, so yeah. are you saying it's not on a level lot? Was it on a level lot or like, what did the lot look like? I guess. Sure. So it was a level lot for the most part, but the reason the like it was such an issue was because mm -hmm. whenever they made the retaining wall, um, like the beams are like supposed to be even, right. But they like, they only like overlapped and like just a little bit. So over time, it just started pushing out and pushing out and pushing out. Um, and so whenever it goes out, like pretty much my entire front yard was just going to come through. Gotcha. Um, and okay. again, I wouldn't have known to look for that. It just came up in the inspection. And, but now, anytime I go and look at a house, I'm like, oh, nope, that, that's an issue of not dealing with it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you also mind after this, will you send pictures of this? Just so, yeah. I mean, I think it'd be, I, I'm a visual learner, so I assume other people might be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. That yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, okay, sweet. Um, so, so now, you know, to look for that, that's super cool. So, <laughs> cause like, I feel like, you know, all of my, you know, stuff that I didn't know to look for, I definitely look for now. Like my big one is, uh, I just lost out on 30 K, um, based on not double checking the square footage. So like the square footage was listed with the County and like, that all made sense, but they didn't calculate the finished square feet. Uh, so like, it, I didn't think to like, look at that. And it, it definitely changed uh, my value by 30 K. So uh, good on the person that bought it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it uh, could have been an extra 30 K to me if I had checked that finished square feet uh, before listing it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah well, thanks for sharing that lesson. I'll definitely do that. that, that <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting okay. is, um, so I've been picking up kind of like investor, like contractor specials almost like, yeah. so they're bank foreclosures usually. And I can tell that like a lot of people have like tried to do additions and then it didn't work out. And so that was what happened in this case. They had added on this, you know, huge, nice sunroom and even did like all the duct work and everything. So it, it was finished by all means. Yeah. And they had submitted it to the county. Um, they just didn't have to update the square feet, which all you have to do is get an appraiser out there. And in Arkansas, this is in Arkansas, um, you only have to say like, you call up an appraiser and you say, hey, I just need to update the square feet. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got this extra That's addition. It. That's it. Uh, they don't have to do a full appraisal, which would be like five, 600 bucks, whatever, you know, whatever it is in the, in your market. But, um, you just say like, just update the square feet. They're like, sure. I'll be out there literally in the same day. They, they wow. send you a sketch and it's $50. <laughs> and then you take that and you submit it to the County, which is just an email at this point. Yeah. Uh, and then they update it and you've increased your value. In my case, it would have been 30 K. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Yeah. And that, that's tough. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm honestly, it worked. I mean, I still made, I still made lots of money, so it's okay. okay. Well, that's good. Um, and the person that ended up buying it, um, they also didn't know, but we were already in contract and we were past uh, contingency removal. And I was like, Hey, just so you know, like if you want out of this, that would be cool. Cause I, I want to <laughs> like relist this, but uh, it was a Latinx family and they were super excited and like, yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, have it. Y'all have fun. Yeah. I'm still making money. Y'all are getting a hell of a deal. Like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, all right. So anyway, let's see. So, okay. So it sounds like you started with real estate because you just kind of fell into it. Like, yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I was paying $1,400 a month in an apartment and I was just like, this is insane. And yeah. I just was like, why not? Like, I'm going to have a roommate here. Let me just get a roommate at another house. Just because again, I'm a part of the rugby community. So like, there's always going to be like people looking for places to stay. And I was like, it makes sense. Like, I don't need a whole house for myself. Like, let me just get a place. And that's all that I really thought real estate was to begin with. Like, I had no desire to be a, an agent or anything like that. I was just like, it makes sense. I don't need to have a whole house by myself. Like, just do it. And then by the end of it, I was like, wow. So like, I just made, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars for free. And yeah. I was like, oh, like, can I replicate this? Definitely. Yeah. So <laughs> I have I'm on my second house hack now. Um getting ready to sell it actually. Um and make some more money on this one and trying to do it again for a third time. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah. It's a good Thanks. place to be. Um 
So let's go back to the original deal. Whenever, yep. whenever you were looking, so did you like use a mortgage calculator and you're like, oh man, my mortgage would only be like 1400 bucks. Why not own it? Like what yeah. was that like? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So um, just using the, like you said, calculators online, super easy. Just do a Google search like, hey, like what could I qualify for? What would this cost? And it just made so much sense. And it was less than what I had to pay for right. the apartment. And again, with it being FHA, it was like no money out of my pocket to make it happen. And even with the, the um, mortgage insurance on top of it, because it was at FHA, it was mm-hmm. still less than the apartment. And I was just like, this is stupid. Why is no one else doing this? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that was my exact experience too. Like um, I, I'm in a, well, originally I'm in California now, but originally I was in Arkansas and my, so I bought a duplex. And when I was looking to rent, uh, rentals were like, I don't know, six, 700 bucks a month for like a thousand square feet, something like that. Um, however, you could buy a whole house or a duplex in my case for under a hundred thousand dollars. Um, and so, yeah, so, and, and then you rent it out and you're like making way more money than, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for example, this particular one, it was 91,500. I talked them down a little bit. Um, and then it was an FHA, but a, a weird one where it's a 203k. Oh, um, gotcha. that, and it's a, uh, so you still pay three and a half percent down. So three and a half percent down. Um, but you also wrap in your renovation costs. Mm-hmm. And I was a newbie investor. And I'll, I'll say, you know, I'm also a woman in real estate. And like the contractors world is like a boys club, or at least that's my experience. Mm-hmm. and they definitely took me to the ringer because uh, I didn't know I was like yeah like whatever just how much is it like I gotta submit this to the FHA people and like I don't know what I'm doing so the renovations were 17,000 which is a lot especially in Arkansas pricing so um, but anyway it was still worth it because 17k plus the 91.5 um, it still came out to like what 109 108 something like that yeah. And then three and a half percent down on that is less than $4,000. So like for basically a car price, I was able to move into a fucking duplex. So (laughs) yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, but that's cool. Like that's same exact experience. I was like, wait a second. (laughs) Like, why am I paying rent? Uh, yeah. (laughs) Like I I figured it out probably my senior year of college and I was just like, I could have done this four years ago. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, oh yeah. And my experience with MHA was like, it took a long time. It was, I wanted to quit all the time. Oh no. What was your experience like? (laughs) Again, I didn't really have anything to compare it to. So I was just like, okay, like, I just have to send a couple emails back with my signature. Like, I was just like, this seems weird. Like, am I getting played? Um, and same goes for the closing of the house too. I was like, so excited for like this big thing. And no, I just sat down, like signed some stuff. And they're like, okay, you're good to go. I'm like, what? What do you mean? Like, <laughs> why are there not balloons everywhere? There should be more, but right. yeah. So it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad experience for me, thankfully. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, so what lender did you use? I mean, I'm just curious, because that sounds like that was an easy process. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Uh, they're Supreme Lending. Um, so they have a couple offices. I know they have some in Texas, um, and then a couple here in Atlanta, and probably okay. some in between as well. Yeah, it sounds like they made that really uh, easy. I did it through Bank of America. And I swear, like, my loan officer quit, like, I had like three oh, no. different loan officers. And then had to resubmit paperwork every single time because they, they like didn't have it for some reason. But yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what told you to keep going through with it? Like, how did you know it was going to be worth it? Well, uh, so my aunt was my agent and she was like, probably like, I just need this commission. So you get your shit together and like, <laughs> like keep going. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I would call her and just be like, I'm out. Like, this is too much work. It's too yeah. much. Like the contractors are driving me crazy. Like every yeah. week they would be because, oh, that's right. Yours was uh, not a rehab loan, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. So that was an added thing. So you had to like get like all these documents from the contractors and the contractors are like dude we just want to like work on this house we don't want to be like giving our social and all this like payment plan stuff so it was just it was chaos 
Um, so yeah, there was like a good, a good couple of months after that experience where I was like, I don't want to see a contractor because I like, they, they were just like hitting me up all the time. Like, when are we getting paid? And I'm like, I don't know. The loan officer just quit. Like, I don't know. No, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do it to a 3k again. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, now that I know, like you can get through it. Uh, but back then, yeah, I think it takes a lot of like sending good vibes out into the universe and manifesting, like, please just let me get through this. Oh, it's maybe easier now. This is also back in, uh, shoot, when was this? 2007, 2008? I don't know. It was a okay. while ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, cool. uh, all right. So anyway, let's see. So what is your least favorite part of real estate investing? Uh, what we're doing right now, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> um, Super duper introverted. Um, so networking is, is really tough for me and I'm, I'm trying super hard. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really trying and just like the whole social media aspect of it too. Like I look at screens all day, like I'm a support specialist for some software. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm just looking at three computer screens all day. And now I've got to like invest time yeah. looking at my phone and networking, which again, like mm. it's fun. I see how it's beneficial, but also I'm just like, I need to go to sleep and not talk to anyone. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Well, thank you for doing this. Yeah, um, sure. yeah it's, it, it is probably the hardest part for me too. It's like all the networking and I'm on like a bunch of mailing lists and stuff too for meetups. And then I'll, you know, after a, a day of working, I'm like, do that yeah <laughs> did I make that plan while I was being social yeah, yeah yeah um but almost every time I would say like 90% of the time it has been worth it so I'm like okay all right fine well you're doing great Thank you. all right so let's see uh but, but, Oh yeah. Um, I actually didn't think about this from my perspective, but I think this is a fun one to like, think about what was the first real estate acronym you came across and you were like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know everyone probably says this, but the whole Burr thing from bigger pockets and Brandon yeah. Turner. Um, and the reason being for me is just like, I love lists and very type a. So the fact that like, it's an acronym that literally tells me, Hey, just do these things. And then you can just keep investing in real estate. Um, mm -hmm. And then like, it also helps me like, you know, how parents are sometimes or just anyone in your family that's like, oh, what do you mean? What are you, what are you doing in real estate? It's like, I do, burr. And then you can just kind of show them how it works pretty easily and they get the grasp of it. So yeah. that's a good one, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I what think for you? me, I think the first one that I didn't really know what this real estate term was, I had already been an investor. I had already, uh, I had already done the duplex thing. I was renting it out and I was like renting it out 2000 miles away, like living far away and still doing it and like doing all the self-management and stuff. Um, but like my partner's sister, she had worked in Bay area real estate and they're really big on cap rates. And I remember her asking me like, oh, what's your cap rate? And I was like, <laughs> like before I responded, I like had to look it up. And then I like, I, I keep meticulous like numbers. So it was, easy, yeah. it was easy enough for me to figure out. But I was like, I have no idea what a cap rate is. Like, let yeah. me figure this out. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. Yeah. That's a scary name too. What'd you say? It's just like a scary name too. Like, yeah. You're like, like huh? Okay. All that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's see, what's the next thing here? Uh, yeah, tell us about a setback or difficult time in your investment journey and kind of like what you did to get through it. Yeah. So I would say last year is when we started to, well, my partners and I started to actually like take real estate investing seriously. And then of course COVID hit and then they were furloughed and I was the only one left with a job. And I was like, how are we gonna <laughs> invest with no money? Um, Cause we were all new to this and we didn't know that you could invest, you know, with no and low money down. Um, but that was, that was pretty tough to get through. Yeah, so uh, I guess, tell me a little bit about the partnership. How many people did you have and like, what did, yeah, how did you pull it off? Yeah. Yeah, so there's a total of four of us. Uh, we started out with just three um, and then 
the reason that we started out with just three is because like our schedules just lined up the most, but we did have a fourth person that we knew was interested in real estate, but it just didn't work out prior to that. Um, but then the first property that actually came through us that we knew we could make work is the type of property that um, this person like just loves and really wanted to be a part of. So it just made sense to bring her on. Um, I'll just go ahead and like name them here if you don't mind. Yeah, um, sure. Of course. At the landlord, um, at West Invest and at Bridget on a Budget. Um, Bridget on a Budget is the one that we brought on last. And she's been just such an integral part of the team. Yeah. Um, and how we got through that, again, good old FHA, uh, we were able to, <laughs> just because it was the only thing that we can make happen for this property, because we just had to get this property. So we were able to get an FHA loan just to get it. And we're going to refinance out of that here in a couple months. Cool. Yeah. Um, so when you refi out, uh, or like what, I guess, so it sounds like you're in the state, you're trying to stabilize the property. Are you doing renovations and stuff? Or what, what does that look like? Yeah, we did a little bit of renovations um, and I actually talk about it later on. But in short, again, COVID hit and um, my, my partner, partner and I, um, we had more experience in making renovations and stuff like that. But Whitney and Bridget, they did not. They had no mm-hmm. idea. Um, but sure enough, my partner and I got COVID. They did not know. They were stuck with having to make all the renovations. So like we were just like FaceTiming them, trying to explain how to make cuts with our table saw and like how to actually lay down laminate, which way it's supposed to go. It was, it was a whole thing, like a ton of YouTubes and all that stuff. Yeah. Do you, did you take any videos of them during this time? Do you have any of this recorded? That sounds hilarious. (laughs) Sorry. I'm on the phone. My bad. Um, (laughs) Uh, there probably are some, uh, I don't know if they'll give them to me, but I'll definitely try to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, or like pictures of the job. Did they do a good job? I'm just curious. Yeah, like- no, they, they did great. And I'm super, super proud of them for That's sure. Awesome. They, they, they knocked it out. Um, and that property, it's super cool because again, it's dated, but it came with tenants. Um, so the only one that we could take care of was the one that was not occupied. Um, and Whitney, she actually lives in that unit now, but basically it, it was just a studio. So they just had to lay flooring in one room, just had to do some painting. So it was pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so yeah. they filled it and got it done quickly. That's cool. Okay. So uh, how many units was this property or is this a single family? So it is a quadplex, but turned duplex. So think of a townhome, mm-hmm. but with a basement. So it's, okay. it's pretty cool. It's, it's a really great property. Cool. And where is that located and what is it worth like rent wise per month? Yeah. So we get 4,100 a month in rent um, and it's in Canton, Georgia. So um, very north of um, Atlanta, probably about an hour up. Okay, cool. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. What's your favorite part of real estate investing? (laughs) (laughs) All of it, honestly. Uh, It's all super fun. But if I had to be specific, I would say just like finding the deals and finding ways to make money. I think just with me getting started in house hacking, I have like an eye for figuring out how to make the best use of the property. Um, all of our realtors that we work with, anytime I tell them a property, like, what do you, like, why do you want that? Like, what, what do you possibly see <laughs> with it? So it, it's always funny to like, you know, kind of show them up and be like, Hey, this is what the vision that I had. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. So, uh, do you mind sending pictures of that too? It might be cool to like flash it up. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Just kind of like what your design stuff has gone. Like, I don't know. Uh, so my partner in particular, like I do not have an eye for design. I don't care about it at all. I just want to like, I'm the number cruncher, you know, like I know like how much this is going to (laughs) cost. And so she'll be like thinking about it like all day and she'll like send me pictures of like, okay, here's this, this, and this, and this. And then I have to go figure out like how the numbers work. Um, Uh but it's just funny to see like, Cause she'll be like, no, that color does not work. And I'll be like, really? <laughs> and then sure okay. enough, I was wrong. So. <laughs> so that's cool. So it sounds like you have a little bit of the design stuff too. So that's really cool that you can, uh, to like, see that like actualized. I, I feel like that's always the, the best part is like, oh, wow. It really did turn out like I like imagined. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And this has definitely helped shape me for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. So let's see. 
Oh, yeah. So you, I mean, you kind of answered this a little bit, but I'll ask it again, just in case you got some more stuff. Uh, So I know from experience, from my own experience, I was doing a flip during COVID. Uh, It was insane. Uh, Everything was on back order. It's still on back order. Uh, Granite took forever. Even the little tile spacers for like doing tile in the bathroom were on back order for three weeks. I'm like, how? Um, yeah. So yeah, so I'm just curious, uh, how has ca- uh, COVID uh, affected your your business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had an impact from the get go. Again, my partners were furloughed, unfortunately, so that kind of took a toll on us. Um, and then when we actually got the property, two of us got COVID. We couldn't go see it, so that was a that was a whole ordeal. Um, and just also like dealing with tenants because again, COVID was all new, and we were like, so like, do we have to tell them some of us have COVID? Like, you know what like what are the laws of this like just so much um but we've learned we've gotten past it thankfully um so at this point we're just kind of careful with everything we do you know always wearing masks um and as far as inventory goes yeah i mean wood is so crazy expensive right now it like i don't know about your area if it's the same way but it's Mm -hmm. it's like three times the price here in georgia yeah yeah it is i i even saw like the the graph on the lumber prices right now and i was like ah <laughs> yeah. not doing the deck restore anytime soon <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right cool so let's see what's next on here oh yeah um yeah i'm just curious I, I you know there's not i mean in my experience i haven't seen a lot of women in this like real estate investing sure. like niche Um, so yeah, what's, what's been your experience with that? Uh, would you, do you have any advice for women starting out or yeah? Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, it's been tough because like you touched on earlier, contractors tend to play around with you if they think you don't know anything and they think you don't know anything just because you're a girl, um, or a woman. It's, it's really frustrating. Um, I would say to get past it, continue to network look for the real estate, um, you know, investment groups in your area, especially if it is an all woman investment group, just because you guys can all continue to empower each other. Um, and just, you know, deal with it. I mean, it's unfortunate, but you just, you know, keep our head down. And if anyone steps out of line, you know, tell them, tell them back off and just keep on with it. Um, I watched a video recently that was like, men barely exist. And when they do, they're like towing the line. And I think that's so true, unfortunately, in this world. What have you done to help combat it? Yeah, so um, uh, so a couple of things I want to touch on, just because that's really great that you mentioned like a, a women's real estate like investment group. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually haven't looked at any in my area, so I don't even know if those exist. If they don't, yeah. like I need to make one because that sounds yeah. Cool. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's great. That's good advice. Um, and then for me, like, yeah, I guess it was just a matter of like paying attention to how I felt inside. Yeah. Uh, Realizing like, I think you kind of touched on this, but in, in my business, reputation is everything. And so like, okay, if, if people aren't going to play nice and men don't want to play nice, then like, okay, well, you're on my shit list now. And like, <laughs> I'm not going to give you my business. And I've made it really far even in the Bay Area now. And so now I'm at a, a level where like, what I say about other people like matters. So mm-hmm. it's like really interesting to see how it shifted. Because I, I didn't stop like, I yeah. took it as like, okay, well, that sucks. Let me read more about this and figure out like, for example, with foundation issues, like I always check like for cracks and stuff, like you just yeah. learn stuff along the way, just like you, like trying and failing um, and being okay with failing. And then, you know, kind of putting together your bubble, like, okay, well, this person's really cool. They're, they're great. You know, I'm going to refer them to other people. And eventually it's like your bubble grows bigger and bigger of like awesome people. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, but cool. All right. Sweet. Um, let's see. What would you say to an aspiring real estate investor starting out? Yeah, uh, there's a lot that I would say. Um, I don't know if it was like this for you, but once I started really getting into real estate, I couldn't talk. I couldn't stop talking about real estate. Like I had to find people that knew about real estate because I just wanted to talk. Like it, <laughs> it's so funny because our, um, 
our partnership, we, we had our meetings at 8 p.m. at night. And then we all realized we had to bump it way earlier because after our meetings, we were all just like high on adrenaline and couldn't sleep just because real estate was so exciting. Um, but yeah, so for somebody starting out, I would just let them talk, ask all the questions that they have, give them any, anything that comes to mind for me, because again, talking about it helped me realize, okay, there's all these different ways to invest. Um, but the number one most important thing that I would probably say to them is just tell anyone and everyone that you are a real estate investor. Um, first, it just feels good to say it out loud. And then two, there's so many people that are like, oh, you invest in real estate? Like, hey, my mom's selling this or hey, my uncle's selling this. Like just so many people just bring you deals for free. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing is just figure out all the different ways you can get funding. Uh, because again, everyone thinks you have to have all this cash to invest and you really don't. So when we finally put that together, we were just like, wow, like this, this is so cool. Anyone can do this. Right. Absolutely. That's a great point. Like for me, I always thought like, oh, I have to go through a lender and it's like all this paperwork. Yeah. And if I don't have a W2 job, like I'm out of luck, yada, mm -hmm. yada. Um, but I think that's one of my favorite parts now is like figuring out how to get creative with the numbers. Cause there's mm -hmm. like, it's almost artistic in a way you're like, okay, here's the problem. Now, like, let me figure out how to solve like all this crazy stuff to be able to get it. And yeah. so my favorite thing now is, you know, when I started realizing like, you know, there are people that just have like a hundred thousand dollars sitting in a bank account making zero money. Yeah. Like, yo, like, <laughs> Me put that we gotta money, talk <laughs> let me put that money to work for you because like yes. you know it's there's always a win-win somewhere and it's like yeah if you're if if you're making zero you know like you're going negative like that's not helping even yeah. if you're only making three percent on your money that's probably only going to keep up with inflation and put you at zero mm -hmm. so like if i can pay you ten percent or eight percent interest on your money that was just sitting there making nothing and I can buy a house with it. We're helping each other. Like that has just been a new level of like, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah. How did you feel when you like first offered that to somebody? We haven't done it yet. We were looking into like how to actually make it work. Yeah. But we actually fully pitched someone yet. It's been awesome. Like it's really easy. Like once I, so the, the way that I do the, the, the conversation, I guess is first, like, Hey, so like how much, how much is your money making you right now? Right. And oftentimes people are like, you know, back when before COVID, it was like, you know, if they had a really good savings rate, it's probably like what, 3%, 2%, that's it. And yeah. so I'm like, wow, that's all you're making. Like, I just assume people are like doing stock or whatever, making good money. Um, yeah. What I realized was like, most people that I had talked to weren't like really doing anything. Yeah. Um, and so when I realized that I was like, wow, this is really powerful. Like I can really help them and they can really help me uh, with a partnership and, and to do the documents for it is actually really, really simple. Like <laughs> it's like you just record, uh, you know, basically a lien on the property for them. And okay. then it's just a simple loan doc. Like that's it. It's like, you know, maybe 30, 60 minutes out of your time to like from start to finish to like make sure everything's in line and mm -hmm. submit it to the county. And that, that's it. It's like so simple. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll definitely have to connect with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, say that again. Sorry. I said, we'll definitely have to connect with you for some more info on that. Just to make sure we're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's way more simple than I expected. And it's, it's just so interesting that like, I don't know, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it was way more simple than I expected. Way yeah. easier than going through a lender. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right. And then let's see. So would you recommend any books or websites? Like what, what did you do to get started? How did you get past that initial fear? That's a really long question. I'm sorry. Answer no, no, that's okay. And if you uh, yeah. rephrase the question too, I should have said that in the beginning. Oh, well. <laughs> no worries. Um, I would definitely recommend The Only Woman in the Room, um, compiled by Ashley Wilson. Have you read that yet? I haven't. That sounds cool though. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Uh, basically, she compiled all these stories of women investors just kind of documenting that's pretty so much cool. what you're doing here. Like, how did you get into investing? Like, what worked best for you, like any advice that you can give to readers. So it's, it's just so good. And it's so empowering to read these stories of other women. It, it's That's I, I love super it. awesome. Wait, so is it all over the US or like what's kind of the, uh, what areas? 
Yeah, it was just all around the world, just anyone. Oh, in the world. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, and then like any websites or like YouTube channels? I mean, you, you mentioned like, you know, how to do the saw. Do you have like a favorite YouTuber or like? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just whatever comes up first um, on Google. Yeah, I usually try to find the one that has the most views mm -hmm. um, just to see like what, you know, what works for other people and who actually has been watching this and pretty much verifies that it works. Mm -hmm. um, there is someone in the in the book, um, Investor Girl Brit. Uh, you can also find her on Instagram. She has a lot of good um, kind of like breakdowns that she'll give every now and then for how she does her stuff. So we like to go and just watch her Instagram and see any, any guidance that she has on it too. Yeah. Um, and just on that note, um, I'm not sure if like all the Home Depots and Lowe's and just random places in your area do it, but usually they'll host like how to fix a thermostat, like how to install like a garage door opener. So like find all of those, throw those all on your calendar because it's just free knowledge out there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. All right. Well, cool. Do you have anything else you want to add? And of course, um, send me links if you can to like the people you mentioned. Yeah, uh, we can just put it in like the comments and stuff. Okay. Uh, and of course, your contact information and uh, there was some, oh, the book you just mentioned, if you would put that too, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, definitely. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah, if you want to add anything else, yeah. No, uh, just again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Um, this is my first recorded meeting with somebody else. So sorry for any slip ups that I may have had, but. Um, yeah, oh, you did awesome. It's great. It's just, a, it's just a chat. I mean, like, I figure we'll get like a couple of little nuggets that we can put on there and, uh, and it benefits both of us. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, week. and then please send me pictures because pictures are awesome. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I've got a ton Especially of that foundation. So I feel like not many people deal with that. Like I definitely have not dealt with, because as soon as I see like, like there's a foundation issue, I'm like, nah, it's scary. But like, it didn't sound that scary. Like $10,000 isn't that bad when you're talking like the level you're saying, like, you know, $150,000 house, like 10,000 isn't that much. So that would be really helpful. I think for people to see like, oh, okay. That's what she's talking about. Like, that's not that bad. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'll get that over to you. Cool. Anyway, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great uh, Friday. I don't know what your, what's your weather like right now? Is it cool? <laughs> oh man, it was so beautiful today. It's been raining like nonstop for two weeks. So it was yeah. super nice to see the sun. I um, got out during my lunch break to actually enjoy the sun, but spent it looking at houses. So <laughs> it, was, it was good. Um, and tomorrow I get to go look at some more houses. So it's just oh, a cool. fun right. real estate, you know? So y'all are actively looking for another property right now? Yeah, for my personal property, I am. Um, because with my team, I we primarily look for multifamily stuff. But for myself, um, I just try to do house hacks pretty much every two years, just because why not until I decide to actually settle down somewhere. Yeah. Okay, cool. So is your partner like, why do we have to move every two years? Do you live with your partner? <laughs> I don't live with my partner. But oh, okay. Often. Um, so yeah, she gets a little bit annoyed sometimes, but um, she's actually super, super hands-on as well. So That's she cool. actually secretly enjoys it as annoying as it is. That's funny. My partner is like, no, we, cause like, as soon as we moved in, <laughs> as soon as we moved in, I was like, uh, I kind of want to like move into a house now. Cause we're in a condo now. And I was like, I kind of want to like be in a house and we, we were like still in boxes. She's like, no, oh, stop no. it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So, yeah, we'll connect with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean we've been here a little over a year now, so I'm I'm I'll talk her into it after a year, I think. But okay. it's kind of unfortunate because they're doing a lot of construction around too. And yeah. so like they're building a brand new, like really nice looking library that will be finished in a year. And she's like, Can we just like enjoy it once it's like <laughs> once everything's like built and then like enjoy it for another year and then move. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, good luck with that. I can't wait to see what else you guys get into. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep in touch and uh, send over stuff. And uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. I really appreciate it and have a good day. Right, sure thing. Take care. Bye. Bye.